What was it like to get this money? And how quickly do you put this money to work? Yeah, uh, always a pleasure being with you, Alex, and uh, with Romain. Uh, look, uh, this money will be uh, put to work very quickly, and we will uh, execute on the project the same way we executed by ourselves uh, with the, the direct reduction plant in Toledo, Ohio. We have been on the forefront on decarbonizing uh, through the investment in big projects, difficult to, to, to handle and difficult to execute. But we, we know what to do, and that, that's one of the reasons why the Biden administration awarded this uh, co-investments with to Cleveland Cliffs. Without the money from the Biden administration, could you make any of this possible, sort of move from coal to natural gas to hydrogen? No, we could not. These are real infrastructure type of products. It takes policy, it takes, it takes resolve to make these investments, because these are multi year, I would say multi-decade type of investments. So we cannot change the landscape just with a company changing the landscape because we need the infrastructure to feed uh, the project. We can't uh, generate the, the feed of hydrogen by ourselves. So these things need to come in a more coordinated way. And the Department of Energy, Secretary Granholm, President Biden are doing the right things on that. All right, so the money's there, and it looks like you're on board with this, uh, Lorenzo. I am curious about the competitive nature of this. Do you have any worries here that the net result of this, relative to your competitors outside the U.S., those not getting this money, does that help you or hurt you? We are, uh, look, at the end of the day, we are technologically ahead of uh, our competitors outside of the United States. Let me give you an example. Japan talks a good game on technology. Japan doesn't have natural gas. We do. So that gave us a, 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 a head start on the ability to use hydrogen. I've already tried hydrogen in two blast furnaces, the one in Middletown, that's a small one, and the one in Indiana Harbor, that's the largest in the, eastern, the Western Hemisphere. So uh, we are technologically ahead. Mm -hmm. We supply steels for the same automakers that they supply. And uh, we, we can do anything we want with our workforce. Can you, can you do anything you want with the current business structure, or do you need expansion? Do you need to build this business beyond just what you have? And if so, how do you do that? Do you do that organically, or do you do that through acquisition? We have done organically so far. That's the first time that we have uh, 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 the help with a co-investment from the government, and acquisitions help because... Uh, we, 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 we can, through acquisitions, we can use a bigger footprint and dilution of fixed costs in our business is key. So it's a combination of both for man. Uh, now, you mentioned that you're able to reduce costs uh, quite a lot by using cheap natural gas. It, if we allow natural gas to be exported in the way that we have and there is no ban uh, on new export facilities, does that change for you? Does it raise the price for you? Well, the, the reduction cost by by uh, doing what we are doing comes from replacing one process, that's the, the coke oven blast furnace route, with another route that is direct reduction and electric melting furnaces. So we are comparing two different things. Uh, as far as exporting natural gas, I think the United States should continue to export natural gas as long as natural gas is available and as long as we, we are benefiting from that. So, but we don't have a, a say on that. We're users of natural gas. We don't produce natural gas. No, but that's what I'm saying. That's why it's good to get your view because you use it. And if you're for it, then that's something to definitely think about. Um, t talking to sort of the growth profile that Romain was just uh, speaking about, um, if the Nippon Steel, U.S. Steel deal doesn't go through, are you firm that you won't bid for th more than $30 a share? Will you reconsider this? Uh, that's a great question, Alex. Uh, before I came to sit here to talk, to speak with you and Romain, I made a calculation based on the current stock price. If my offer had been accepted, let me refresh my offer. My offer was uh, 1.444 shares of Cliffs per share of US Steel plus $27. You make the calculation with $21.46, and you're going to see that my offer would be $58 per share. Nippon Steel offered 55. I had support from the USW. Nippon Steel didn't have support from the USW. 
I discussed with the U.S. government prior to making the the, the offer to make sure that I had a pass to clear uh, antitrust, and you still decide not to hit, not to listen and go with Nippon Steel. Now the president of the United States has spoken. He said this deal uh, uh, will deserve serious scrutiny, and the ownership needs to stay with the United States. Yeah. So the table has been set. The ship has already hit the. The, the, the Titanic has already hit the iceberg, and now it's a, a matter of a time, a matter of little time right. before the ship sinks. That's a, that's a nice premium, and I, I can understand why you would be upset that a company would not even consider it. But do you have the financing laid out for this? Because that seemed to be the concern when this was first made public. Oh, yeah. We, have, we had a fully committed offer. We had support from Wells Fargo, J.P. Morgan, uh, UBS, and Truist. It was fully financed and yeah. we had everything in place. But, you know, U.S. still decided that uh, what, trying to sell the Nippon Steel was a better outcome. So what, they, they were What would you be interested in remaking another offer, even if it's at the same price? Look, I'm not going to negotiate on live television. You're, you're but, welcome uh, to. Yeah, yeah, no, but I'm not going to do okay. it. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but right. uh, we will be, we'll be at the other side. Well, after the, the, the deal is unraveled. Yeah. And we can do. I, I'm very concerned about the workforce. And uh, 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 I feel bad for the fact that these people are being treated like if they don't exist. Okay. So they unionize the workforce, the USW workers over there. Uh, I, I, I'm going to be able to do that as fast as I can. I'm just waiting for the final move from, the, from President Biden. And right. I hope it's well, there's a shareholder meeting also in a, like about two and a half weeks' time, Lorenzo. Yeah, but uh, that doesn't change anything. You know, I fully expect that the shareholders will approve the deal. And so what? Because, uh, uh, like I said before, well, after the ship hits the iceberg, you yeah. can vote if the ship will sink or not. The ship will sink. Now, uh, I, if I had an offer of 55 uh, on, in front of me, I would vote for, for, for the offer. So. Uh, there's no surprise on that. We all know that, that the, the shareholders will approve the offer. But don't forget, my offer, if you still had picked my offer, uh, as of right now, 2148 would be north of uh, 58. So they did not pick the highest bid, bidder. They, they, they picked the one that uh, they felt that uh, would, would, would be successful in a transaction and a uh, bad mistake.